Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Earth and Environmental Science and Module 1 on Earth's Resources. This is video number 3, we're still continuing with our look at the structure of the Earth but this time going to concentrate on some of the evidence that we have from meteorites. So what we want to do now is see if there's anything we can gain from a, a study of meteorite evidence to demonstrate differences in density and or composition of the structure of the Earth. A goal here is to just have a little bit of an understanding of what meteorites are and about the composition of meteorites and what they may or may not add to our understanding of the structure of the Earth. So is there any information that we can gain from the study of meteorites that helps to tell us something about what's happened to the Earth? So I guess a good place to start is uh, what are meteorites? So hopefully you'll be aware of the fact that there are a couple of different terms that we use to describe rocks in space, uh, meteoroids, uh, rocks that are moving around, uh, meteors uh, or shooting stars are ones that start to come through our atmosphere. That uh, contact, that friction between the, the particles in the atmosphere and the space rock uh, can often give off um, sparks or, or certainly heat uh, and potentially light. And so we may see them kind of moving through our atmosphere. And when they hit the ground, if they do land on the surface, they don't uh, completely break up on the way in, then they are regarded as being meteorites. So um, space rock that's actually landed on the Earth's surface, and that's kind of the key here, is that they've hit the Earth's surface. One of the important things about meteorites is that when they do strike the, Earth, the Earth's surface, the impact force is so large that they often leave craters that are way bigger than the actual diameter of the meteorite. So, you know, if we're looking at a small area, we may be looking at a size of meteorite that's considerably smaller than the actual crater that it leaves behind. A lot of that um, is just that conversion of energy as the, as the meteorite comes into contact with the Earth's surface. What we do know is that there's three main types of meteorites, the iron uh, meteorites, a kind of a, a composite, stony iron, somewhere between the stony um, meteorites and the iron-rich meteorites. And the stony ones themselves uh, tend to be either grainy or, or like bubbles uh, for chondritic ones or, or non-grainy, more layered ones that we get in our achondritic um, stony meteorites. One of the other interesting things when we study meteorites is the whole idea of where did water come from. And certainly there are scientists who believe that most of the Earth's water had an uh, extraterrestrial origin. The Earth being close enough to the Sun um, to make it very warm, particularly at that time when we were doing the accretion phase where all of the mass was starting to uh, coagulate, to stick together. Um, the, the amount of heat involved in that would have vaporised most of the water molecules. And so therefore they would have been sent away. But we do find a region in space uh, where the sun's rays uh, or, the, or the radiation from the sun is not strong enough um, for the temperatures to be high enough for water to be anything other than ice crystals. And if, those, if that solid ice is transported uh, inside rock or within um, particles that are going to become uh, meteorites that are going to actually land on the Earth, then that may, may be a way in which water has been brought in, um, uh, into the Earth's surface. And, and in addition to that, there's, there are suggestions that we've, uh, particularly some meteorites that were found in um, Antarctica, suggesting that there may have been some sort of very simple kind of bacterial kind of life that may have actually been brought here. But then that also may have left the surface of the Earth and, and returned, if you like. So um, origins of these things are always a little bit um, unknown and hard to speculate upon except where we have the opportunity to start using some of the minerals that are present that we find um, both on the Earth's surface and also in meteorites to do some dating and I'll have a look at that in just a moment. Um, one of the things that we think may have been a, a, a result of 
the collision between the Earth and these small space rocks is the delivery of additional water that actually has uh, increased the water content of the Earth. Now, obviously, uh, water is a very important substance um, for life on Earth. Um, it's an important habitat for a, um, a lot of life, and it's also the basis of a lot of our climate and weather patterns. Um, but water's not the only thing that we've learned a little bit about from the study of meteorites. And, and I guess one of the things that we uh, want to focus on here is we want to try and link what it is we know about meteorites to the structure of the Earth. And there's a really good study that was reported on a few years ago um, that where scientists were looking at zircon. Now, zircon is a really important um, substance. And zircon crystals uh, may be found in meteorites. And where they are, they may contain some rare elements such as hafnium and lutetium. And these particular ones may well have a, um, uh, an, an unstable form, an unstable isotopic form. And so the study of these can actually start to give you an idea about um, the dates or the ages of these particular things. Um, what the scientists looked at was the fact that the, um, in the, using the planetesimal accretion model, we have heat and pressure inside of the Earth mixing the composition of the layers over time in a process that's known as differentiation. And that is that this mixing, this, this uh, movement of materials around uh, within, the, within the depths of the planet um, it ends up with denser material sinking and the less dense material rising. And we've, we have talked about that before. And knowing something about how and when layers form also relies on a little bit of knowledge of the original material that formed the Earth. And the study of the composition of these meteorites suggesting that um, if you look at how the Earth's crust had changed, even in some of the oldest parts of the Earth's crust, it did suggest that there may have been um, an age of around about four and a half billion years, which is kind of the age that we have now for the formation of the Earth, when it um, became a, a form in which it was uh, a, a planet, a solid planet, uh, a rocky planet, and a planet that would, in time, be perhaps um, a place where life could begin. So we have, uh, I guess, just a, a bit of a brief introduction here to what meteorites are, the different types of meteorites, and some of the information that they may be able to give us about the structure of the Earth. And obviously we want to have a look at this in a little bit more detail in some exercises in class. Thanks for watching.